When it comes to divine intervention, this is an incredibly powerful ability for clerics. Yeah, divine intervention for the cleric is in the class, what we think of as the class's big swing in terms of its class features. Right. It is very powerful and it's intentionally very powerful. In a way, it's a mini wish spell. Wizards get wish, you know, when the, and they can get wish when they gain access to ninth level spells. It's about 17th level usually. Uh, yeah, uh, but clerics at 10th level get this divine intervention ability and we decided we wanted to embed it in the core class itself because having a relationship with your deity and your deity listening to you is such a core part of a cleric's identity. Mm -hmm. We thought, let's not beat around the bush. Let's actually give you an ability where you have a chance of getting your god to listen and intervene on your behalf. The DM, though, decides if you succeed in getting your deity's ear, the DM decides the nature of that intervention, and the guidance we give is similar to at least one piece of the wish spell, and that is the intervention, it would be appropriate for it to take the form of any cleric spell or of a channel divinity ability. And so if a DM is you know, racking their brain thinking, oh gosh, what am I gonna do? I don't wanna bust open my campaign as the god helps in some way, a DM could just pick a cleric spell that aligns fairly closely to what the cleric requested and have that be what happens. DM can go beyond that though, but my recommendation is whatever a DM does uh, to not destroy your campaign, not, it, divine intervention is not meant to be the cleric's I win button. Right. It, it is, it's meant like the wish spell to give you this power powerful, creative feature that still has limitation. And plus, once you use it, you can't use it again for seven days. So right. when you do use it and, and you succeed at using it, you better mean it because it's going to be a while before you can take that big swing again. And uh, is there like that threat of like trying to like resurrect a character over and over again? Like it, it, every time it fails, you can just keep on praying to your deity or focusing or meditating to your philosophy over and over again until you get what you want? Is that a danger or is that something, how, how does the DM kind of handle that situation? So uh, every DM can handle it differently since there's no rule built into divine intervention on, you know, right. you're, you're gonna be penalized if you keep, you know, oh, oh goodness, you know, you've now, you've now raised Martha from the dead 10 times. Right. Um, or I um, mean, just the attempt to do it. Oh, like, okay, yeah, I yeah, failed no. the first time, but yeah. I'm going to try again. Yeah. Just, yeah. you can keep trying. Uh, Which is kind of the point, right? Yeah. <laughs> like to, pray and pray. And your DM might decide that God gets cranky. Right. Uh, yeah. you know, the, the DM, the DM might decide that the more, you know, there's, there is a term of a person being a God botherer, uh, the, the more you engage in God bothering, uh, the, more, the more likely I as a DM would be tempted to have the God uh, behave in kind of a rascally manner. Uh, and again, I'll use the wish spell as an example. In the wish spell, we say, be careful sometimes how you word the wish with this idea that whatever entity or force is granting your wish isn't necessarily on your side and might interpret the words in a literal fashion that will not always give you exactly what you want. Now with a god, and especially the god you serve, unless you've been a really bad cleric, that god most likely is on your side. So they're not gonna, they're not gonna probably, if they actually listen to your call for intervention, try to undermine you. But if you've been a bit of a, of a pain in their, in their behind, <laughs> They might give you what you want, but with a twist. Right. Uh, plus, it is a very common thing in our world's wisdom traditions for deities to be rascally and to give people what they prayed, prayed for, but not in the way they expected. Uh, right. Because sometimes uh, the things we ask for are not actually the things we need. And that's the other thing for a DM to consider is this isn't some uh, faceless or personalityless force. Right. It's a deity uh, that has an agenda of their own. Uh, now, 
you could of course decide that you are a cleric of a force or a philosophy, but even there, the DM has the, the, that force or philosophy to guide how that divine intervention manifests. For instance, if, if you don't follow a deity as a cleric, but instead maybe you're a cleric of peace, and you are seeking divine intervention from the concept of peace itself, almost you could think of it as like the platonic ideal of peace. Mm -hmm. Peace is probably not going to give you exactly what you want if your, your request is, let's start a war or, you know, something like that. Yeah. Uh, or or if, if peace does answer your prayer for, you know, and, and it involves some kind of violence that you're requesting, it might undermine you in some way to push you toward peace. So it, it's, it, it's, only, it's not undermining you in the big picture. It's just undermining you in sort of the little picture. Because like, right. you said, I want, I want X, and peace is like, well, you're going to get Y that maybe along the way you'll get X. But why is more important to to the this force that wants this particular outcome in the cosmos? See, this concerns me greatly now <laughs> when it comes to like the trickery domain. If you are an agent of chaos mm -hmm. and you just firmly believe, and that's your philosophy is trickery, when you ask for divine intervention from a universe, like from whatever plane of existence that that domain energy is coming from, what do you get? Like, if you're trying to resurrect somebody using divine intervention, what kind of, like, I expect that's the most dangerous clerical class to be part of, right? Well, it... In terms exactly. of divine intervention. I mean, it can, just, you've got to be careful. And, <laughs> and, and that's, that's one of the reasons why there's a distinction between divine intervention and just casting a spell. So... Yeah. My recommendation to cleric players, if they, if they want a reliable, predictable result, <laughs> cast a spell. <laughs> yeah. But if you, want a, if you want that big swing yeah. uh, that maybe is beyond your reach, use divine intervention. But especially if your DM is in the mood to really get into the storytelling of this divine power and your relationship with it, the results will probably be advantageous for you, but also unexpected. Uh, you can just think of almost any of the gods in the D&D multiverse, not just uh, tricksters. Uh, I mean, even in a deity like Moradin, uh, god of dwarves, might, again, give you something you didn't expect. Uh, probably it's going to, things will show up with beer steins and anvils or hammers or some, when you were like, I, you know, I just wanted to heal grandma. I didn't realize the healing was going to come in this beautiful Souvenir beer stuff. <laughs> <laughs> that's charming. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But and that's and I bring that up because it's also a chance for a DM to really uh, do some storytelling. Interject uh, personality. It, the yeah. personality of the god, the personality of the culture that the god might be associated with. Uh, really, everything that a DM does, whether it's divine intervention or something else, really is a chance and should be seen as a chance to to tell more of the story, whether it's the immediate adventure or it's the story of the campaign or it's the story of the cosmos. And the cleric, more than almost any other class in the game, is the class that's about the cosmic story. We, we sometimes, back when we were working on 5th edition, would refer to the cleric as the quest giver class. Because think about the number of D&D stories that involve some cleric's god, whether that cleric is a player character or a non-player mm -hmm. character, uh, wanting something done and that desire or that god's conflict with another god being the fuel of an adventure and sometimes an entire campaign. And so that's why we often think of the cleric is like the, the quest giver class par excellence and divine intervention is... Uh, one of the most amazing ways to represent that because, again, you might get the thing you want and then a whole other adventure might be sparked by what the god causes to happen. Right. I like that. That's charming.